And so I think the more shows like ours come out, you know, it's only going to call more attention to like, oh, shit, they're black people that are working in these spaces. Like maybe we could get jobs like doing this, too. So that's really, I think, ultimately the goal. And, you know, it, there's definitely been more strides even from 2017 from the Kickstarter to now. But, um, you know, it can always be better. I watched the, the series uh, Young Love last night with my eight year old stepdaughter and my partner. And we loved it. It was. A- oh, that's so dope. We watched the whole thing, though, simply because I want her to watch the other half of the series when it actually comes out on Mac. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. But, uh, Hair- but Young Love is fantastic. But Hair Love was an incredible uh, Academy Award winning short film and also an amazing uh, book. But back when you were doing the Kickstarter for Hair Love, was it always the intention to do uh, to, to grow out the world to being a, a television show? or a film? And how did you come to the decision to make sure that it was going to be a show rather than a film? Great question. You know, honestly, like when we first got Vashti Harrison's artwork back for our Kickstarter, it was just like, you know, we met her six months before our first book came out, Little Leaders. And like, it just was so incredible, man. Like the the way her artwork is is so warm and so full of life. And, you know, honestly, seeing her artwork was a thing where we like, man, like we need to like try to figure out a picture book. Because, you know, like this looks like it could be a TV show. Like those were the kind of the early combos we were having during the Kickstarter. And but, you know, as you know, obviously having an idea idea and actually doing it are two different things. And so kind of the seed was planted then. But like as the short got completed and we put it out into the world and just saw the love it was getting, like getting tagged every day in pictures of dads reading the book to their daughter, like, you know, school showing the short film and then reading the book. It just. It, uh, we were literally like, damn, like if all this is happening with the short, like we got to try to figure out how to like have these characters talk and, you know, move and really see what their inner life is like. And then um, we debated between a movie and a series and I don't know, a movie just felt like it wouldn't be big enough. You know what I mean? Like um, it just, you know, I don't know if the world is ready for like such a grounded feature um, that deals with kind of like family issues like that. You know, I think they will be soon, but it wasn't when we were trying to develop and um we just were just like, man, this could be a series, you know, like I love all those like black family sitcoms in the 90s that were on like UPN and NBC and CW. And we really wanted this to feel like a live action show um, that the entire family could watch. We, our goal was for it to be family friendly and like co-viewing some that, you know, the grandparents could watch with the grandkids and the parents and et cetera. And um yeah, we're just really excited that it's finally coming out. You know, it definitely has been a long journey. You know, the short was 2017. The show's coming out in 2023. But it's been really cool seeing it, the develop of it, the development of it in all these different areas. I actually wanted to ask you about this being a show for the whole family because it absolutely is. The one thing I love about this show is that I was just as interested in Zuri's journey as I was in her parents, Stephen and Angela and the um, grandparents. And, and, that- and same thing, vice versa. Like my eight-year-old, she loves the parents as well. And this is oh, really a show for the whole family. Can you talk about capturing that tone? Listen, man, that is the biggest compliment I think I've gotten all day, man. Um, <laughs> honestly, no, because that was really the goal. And it's hard, bro, because like, you know, with the animated series, like, you know, things are either very like superhero and very action heavy or the family shows tend to be a little bit more raunchy. Right. Or like The Simpsons. Right. It's just like a, it's kind of a unique thing because um where we find these parents like they're in their twenties. Like I've never seen an animated series that focused on a millennial couple that didn't have it figured out and had a kid too. And so for us, the tone was the hardest thing because it could have been a kid show. It could have been an adult show, but we really wanted to make sure that we didn't alienate the people that were fans of the book and the short film. And we also were like, can't we have it all? You know, like we, we should try to push for this co-viewing thing. And I think ultimately what we ended up doing was like, you know, when we're in the adult world, like, let's just be in it, you know, like kids really do like watching things that tend to be like slightly older, you know, more often than not, like you see kids loving Spider-Verse that are too young to be watching that and kids loving, you know, just all these different things, Marvel movies, etc. Um, So we just was like, look, like, let's just be in it. Like when we're in the adult world, when we're Steven being a music producer, let's just live in that. When we're with uh, Angela at the shop, let's live with that. And when we're with Zuri, the thing that we did was because also one thing I want to point out, typically with family shows, the kid is like 13, right? 12, 13, 14. You know, I'd never really seen a family show where they only had one kid and they were six. Right. So that's really a wide gap totally. Right. But what we did with Zuri was we tried to make sure that 
a lot of the scenarios that she went through and shout out to Karen Tolliver for this, because this was definitely one of her ideas. It was just like, let's try to make sure that the scenarios that Zuri is going through are relatable to adults too. Like the Girl Scout cookie episode, episode five, episode. the best example of that, just because like, we've all been in a situation where we got a job under false pretenses. We got there, felt taken advantage of, and then we had to end up leaving and, you know, starting our own hustle, right? Um, and so it was just like that. That's how we had tried to approach theory. Um, theory, uh, Zuri, theory is my real daughter. Um, <laughs> we we just really try to like level up her conflicts to more adult, like relatable things. And then, um, and also the way she talked, having her talk a little bit more advanced and then um, just let the adults kind of be in their world. Now in the short uh, hair love, the only person we, we hear from is Angela played by Issa Rae. Yeah, but in the Rowan Bro Conway does such a tremendous job as Ziri. <laughs> She's so authentic in that role. Was it always your uh was it always kind of in the plans to cast a kid to play that role? Not always, man. We um debated on should we cast a kid or cast an adult. And you know, just because Ziri really is kind of the bit of the heart of the show, like we wanted to make sure that she came across as authentic. And um she actually Brooke is actually the only kid that we cast on the whole show. Um, everybody else is played by adults. You know, Deborah Wilson voices a few kids. Like we got some other um, young adults that voice other characters. And so, you know, she's literally the only kid and, and it just makes her voice stand out even more, I think, because she really is bringing that real energy and just she's so dope, man. Like we had her saying some like super sophisticated things and she just really was like killing it, you know, especially like I don't know if you got to the Angela Davis one yet, but uh She's she's really great in that too. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Having a kid play a kid, it brings a whole nother energy to the project. Yeah, it does. Now, Kid Cuddy is perfect as Steven. Um, <laughs> really look, is. he's from the Midwest. He has those uh hardworking Midwest values, and he's yep. a great actor. What did he bring to the role of Steven that wasn't on the page? Yeah, all the things you said, man. I mean, damn, you kind of got my my script down. Um, <laughs> you know, like him being from Cleveland was really important, honestly. Like you know, the show is set on the west side of Chicago and it's like, you know, the Midwest thing is a little different. Right. You know, our, our, our people came up from the south. Right. So we talk a certain way um, and he's just so great. Obviously, he's a great artist and, you know, he remembers what it was like being a younger artist trying to come up and get signed. So that was really important. And just he loves animation, man. You know, obviously, we all loved Intergalactic and what he was able to do with that. You know, definitely hope they come home with the Emmy. And um you know, he's just a good dude, man. Like, like really got the vision, you know, and uh, he's also a young father, you know, has like a 10, 11 year old and uh, all this stuff. I just I think he really brought a lot of amazing vulnerability to the role because the way I kind of envisioned we envisioned Steven was um, him just being kind of not so you have some people that just really don't like conflict. Right. Like He has like just a really hard time just attacking things head on, especially when he knows that it's going to lead to a confrontation. And so he's kind of put in these situations where like he does have to like fall back a little bit and he's kind of getting, you know, taken advantage of a little bit. And I just thought he played some of this stuff so well when um, he was in the low moments and he's so great in the high moments too. I love that this show is about a young millennial family just trying to figure it out. And yeah. I think that's just so relatable, but the show also touches on this multi-generational yeah. uh, family element too. Um, and, and the cool thing about that is it's, it's us looking at this show and seeing how these six different people kind of handle one situation all differently. Yeah. Can you speak about the, uh, the generational aspect of the show a little bit. It was just cool, man. You know, I, I had a pleasure of um, when I first moved to LA, I was a PA on girlfriends. And then I um, had a chance to work with Tracy again, uh, directing on blackish. And, you know, I just love blackish because um, obviously their comedy is a little different than ours. They're a little bit more broad, but um, I just love the multi-generational component of the show. You know, like it really was about like what you just said, like seeing how three different generations attack one problem. And, um, you know, Loretta and Harry were just such amazing guests, like oh, oh, just great. legends in the game. Like Harry's actually from Chicago. Uh, Loretta is just Loretta. You know, she's just a legend, <laughs> you know, yes. like in her own right, has played so many like, you know, mom and kind of maternal figure like roles and um you know I just love her character you know like both of them like I love how they're designed like they look like real grandparents you know like Gigi got the locks Russell got the bowling shirt and the khakis and the in the barbecue sandals <laughs> like he's just they're they're both just so good and um yeah the multi-generational thing was just really dope for us because 
we were really able, some episodes we focused a little bit more on Steven and Angela and Zuri, some we focused more on Gigi and Russell and Zuri. So we were able to get like a really nice mix of um, combinations of like storylines that we were able to attack. And, you know, I think with them being millennial parents, they're very like less, they're, they're not really all about gender roles at all. And then you have these two parents that, that these grandparents that are all about gender roles. Like I do the good and cleaning, you do the fixing. And to see him, you know, Russell even looking at Steven like, wait, <laughs> is she taking her to work? Is she going to work? Is she taking the daughter to school? Like, what you got going on over here, young man? Like, it just was so much comedy kind of in that. And um, yeah, it was just fun, man. <laughs> now, the animation style in this is gorgeous. But uh, a question I wanted to ask you is, in what ways do you believe Young Love can contribute to the positive representation of diversity in, anim in the animation industry? Man, I think it can contribute a lot. You know, I think... Um, I think I haven't really seen a grounded animated series like this before. Um, so I hope that it can lead to more like grounded sitcom, like more animated shows kind of depicting all different types of diverse groups. Um, but I also think for us, it was just like, we just leaned all the way in, man. Like, you know, this is, if this is about a black family on the West side of Chicago, like things got to feel authentic. Like we, we were at a hair shop, like the salon got to feel real, you know, when he's with the producer, like that, those beats got to feel real. And, just Zuri at school, like it, it, we just there things become more universal the more specific you get, and we see with like shows like Southside and Abbott Elementary how they're able to also lean into their regionalness sure. with Philadelphia and Chicago, and um, we try to just lean in in that same way. Now, uh, last question I have for you is: What did you learn from the process of making the short film Hair Love, uh, and then doing and that you took with you to the series of Young Love, and on the opposite of that, uh, with a larger team? with Young Love uh, and, and being a larger group of collaborators, uh, can you talk about um, bringing that shared vision to life with many collaborators? Yeah, you know, like Hair Love was my first time doing animation. So I just love the iterative nature of animation, like how you're able to do storyboards, watch it, fix things, do more storyboards. You know, like you get a chance to like make the story three or four times before you even go into production. Like that's pretty much like with Hair Love, it took us two years one year and like nine months of that was more was actually like just story development, just making sure that the beats were hitting. And so with Young Love, like it was very similar, you know, like in with animation is dope because you just have more time to kind of get things right. But it's also, like you said, way more people. And so just trying to make sure that that vision was coming across probably was honestly the hardest thing because, you know, tonally like pe pe people saw it like in different ways they kind of wanted it to be more adult some people wanted to be more kitty and so it was like you know really trying to put that foot down to kind of maintain the vision that you have for it and keeping a family but then also um you know and diversity in animation isn't quite where it needs to be right like when i first moved to la you know in chicago i didn't know there was a film industry that you could actually get jobs working in like who knew and I know a lot of kids today who are great artists and do graffiti and do all the other different things that can easily translate to animation don't even know that, oh, my God, like you could work on the next Spider-Verse, like right. you could work at Pixar. Like, and so I think the more shows like ours come out, you know, it's only going to call more attention to like, oh, shit, they're black people that are working in these spaces. Like maybe we could get jobs like doing this, too. So that's really, I think, ultimately the goal. And. You know, it, there's definitely been more strides, even from 2017, from the Kickstarter to now. Right. But, um, you know, it can always be better. Absolutely. Well, Matthew, thank you so much for your time. I love this series. It is oh, so that's, so, that's amazing. The short, the short is incredible. You know, oh, I mean, it's fantastic. It's so good. It's over 100 million views. It's so good. Oh, but, thanks, man. No, nah, man. Thank you for your time, it, you, Matthew. I really appreciate it. 